Since 1992, the United States and our allies have stood together for a denuclearized Korean Peninsula. We hope to achieve this objective through peaceable means, but all options are on the table. The era of strategic patience is over. All right, you heard the vice president. All options on the table. Now, as we await Sean Spicer, who's going to address this and a whole lot more, I want to bring in my esteemed panel. I have former CIA officer and radio talk show host Buck Sexton on set with me, along with Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and American Majority CEO Ned Ryan. Good to see all you guys. Buck, first of all, you could you weigh in on what we may or may not have done to thwart this attempt by North Korea? This would be a neither confirm nor deny situation. The U.S. government's never going to really give you any information one way or the other on this. I don't know, but certainly when you look at the realistic options, people were reporting on mm -hmm. a first strike possibility last week in the news. That's not a realistic option. That's not something we would ever want to do in the realm of trying to bring North Korea to the table to give up its nuclear program, that would be catastrophic. That's an absolute last resort, a military option. So now you look at everything else that would be on the table, and certainly uh, that includes diplomacy, it includes some other methods that would be out there that uh, we, won't, takes, we won't know about, but that anything, <laughs> anything that it takes that we can do to yeah. stop North Korea from getting advances in its missile program would be important. Um, I, I want to get back to how this all started in just a moment and, and President Clinton and uh, perhaps some naive assumptions that were made regarding North Korea way back when. But Ned Ryan, let's talk about what's on the table right here, right now. Mike Pence saying, listen, don't mess with President Trump. Don't mess with the U.S. on this. We're trying to enlist China support. What are our options? What do we do? How do we get them to behave? Well, I mean, Trish, you, I think you make a very good point that has to be addressed, that we're here in this situation because of the Clinton administration back in the mid-90s, not putting down a you know, firm foot and saying you can't accelerate your nuclear program. But let's not give the Bush administration a pass either, because remember, let's not forget that Bush made North no Korea no, the no, third no, part okay. They're come to me. of its access of evil. But during 2006, North Korea became a regional nuclear power. So here you have Trump saying enough is enough. Like Penn said, we're, we're done having conversations. We're going to have a show of force here to say the real conversation here, Trish, is are we going to let the, quite frankly, as John McCain said, the fat crazy kid have nuclear capabilities and the ability to drop a nuclear missile into the United States? No, the answer is no, we're, answer's going no, we're not going so, to. But you know we're thing. not going to. Trump's exactly. not going to. So how do, what do we do but, to but prevent that But here's the situation. We are, we are accelerating this to say we are not going to let this continue. They've gone from having 77 pounds of plutonium, weapon-grade uh, plutonium, to now 110 pounds in the last three years. And so what he's saying is, I am going to have the Carl Vinson strike group come in. I'm going to say we are going to have a conversation. We're going to accelerate the conversation. Mm -hmm. And here's the All thing right. that's taken place over the last couple of weeks, Trish. 59 Tomahawk missiles into Syria, a Moab into Afghanistan. The idea of deterrence of saying we are yeah, okay, serious but, but, now. You know, that works in, in, in a world where you're dealing with sane players. I guess my, my one concern, Leslie, in all this is this guy's absolutely, totally nuts. He's the crazy one out there. So, well, 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 you know, even as a deterrent for the lengths of Iran, I mean, they see what we're doing with the 56 Tomahawk missiles. They see what they're doing with the mother. We're doing with the mother of all bombs and they get it. Russia may get it. But can this guy get it? Well, one of the problems is the boy that cried wolf, and we don't know when he's bluffing and when he isn't, because he has historically, especially since we referred to his nation as one of the axes of evil, uh, you know, threatened, uh, you know, mass annihilation, and not just of South Korea, but of the enemies, of course, of which we were one. Look, North Korea has been a problem, and the leader of North Korea has been a problem since Harry Truman. It's not just the past president in eight years, and it's not just the past three presidents. I'm going to give Donald Trump credit here. Don't faint, y'all. Here's the thing. Uh, right now, engaging China and bringing China uh, into, into the fray, into the table, and, and looking at economic sanctions that really haven't been considered uh, in the manner that Donald Trump is in this administration is looking at it, I think is key now because we're not only different looking at a new leader, but we're looking at new capability uh, with weaponry and with nuclear weaponry and missiles. And let's remember this leader, Trish, to your point, he does not want to lose his position. He's not just a leader. We have to remember, this is not just a dictatorship. It's a totalitarian regime. He is their god, if you will. He doesn't want to lose that. He knows 
it would be, if you will, a nuclear holocaust if he were to bring in the United States by getting into a ground war with South Korea. Okay. Uh, he does well, not you know, have the ability to Perhaps that's heartening. Us. I mean, my concern is maybe he doesn't understand that. Maybe he doesn't exactly understand the implications of getting into a nuclear war with us. Go ahead, Buck. Uh, up to this point, North Korea has acted in a rational fashion from North Korea's perspective. They have been advancing their nuclear program without crossing into international red lines, and they've been doing it at a at a pretty good clip, a pretty good pace, given the fact that we've had sanctions, we've had agreements, we've had talks, there have been nuclear freezes. None of that has worked. North Korea has been advancing its nuclear program, has been doing more missile tests, more nuclear tests. And so now we're trying to do a few things. You want to contain North Korea as best you can. Part of that would be missile defense in a worst case scenario. You want to erode the regime's power from the inside. That's where sanctions come in, as well as other diplomatic relations, particularly with regional allies. And you hope for regime change as well. But part of the problem here is that there wasn't very much done for eight years of Barack Obama's administration on North Korea of note. Uh, the strategic patience line is really the best description of it. And that goes up there with leading from behind in Libya in terms of a strategic approach. It was well, honestly... So you, you know what that makes me worried about all this? I look at Iran and I look at the nuclear deal we stuck with, struck with Iran. And, and Ned right. Ryan, my concern is, is, is Iran basically going to be North Korea all over again? Fast forward to the future. I mean, we, we've got to deal with North Korea now. But let's face it, we're going to have to deal with Iran at some point as well. Well, no, and, and, and you're making a very fair, very fair point here. I, I mean, the Obama doctrine seems to have been a hope for diminution of threats, and the Trump doctrine seems to be, we're not going to let this slide anymore. We're going to respond swiftly, and it will be a punishment of threats. And so you're right. Not only are we dealing with North Korea, we're also dealing with Iran. The thing that's interesting, Trish, you know, as we've seen Trump say, well, I'm not going to call China a, a currency manipulator. My hope is that he will then say, okay, in, in exchange for that, I need you to really crack down because let's face it, North Korea would not be where it's at with its nuclear capabilities. Don't we think he's doing Russia that, Ned? Isn't he doing that? I mean, maybe you don't want to do it so publicly because maybe then China feels like you're backing them into a well, corner. See, that's but the point. One and that's would why think if he's not labeling them a currency manipulator as he threatened to do, then there is some kind of quid pro quo. They, and, that's the, and that's why some Trump supporters like myself are saying, okay, we'll give you a pass on this idea of currency manipulation. If you can leverage China into saying to North Korea, knock it off, we're going to yank on your chain and you're going to you're going to knock off this behavior. Leslie, Let's isn't that, because, hang on, I want to get Leslie back in. Isn't that in China's interest to do that, too? I mean, it, not just the fact that we're telling them to do so, but, you know, they get they get some real instability in the region. Uh, yes, China definitely has the incentive. But one key element, folks, that we're not taking into consideration is South Korea. Seoul and the people of South Korea are much closer and would certainly be victims of any type of irrational weapon reuse, missile, nuclear or otherwise uh, from North Korea. They have an election going on. It looks like the more liberal candidate is going to be the winner who actually wants more, not less diplomacy, which is pretty contrary to what our vice president uh, is saying. And our president is saying, and what America America seems to want to give the signal for. This is not like Afghanistan. This is not a cave. This is this is an entirely different thing. We're talking about millions of people in a very close proximity uh, to North Korea, to to the border, to these missiles uh, in Seoul. And, and we have oh, to Trish. factor that in. We have to be careful of threats made mm -hmm. on Twitter and otherwise. Well, there, there also there, there's really a double hostage situation. You have the North Korean people being held hostage by Kim Jong-un, as well as all of mm -hmm. South Korea. Uh, and Seoul is within artillery range. It's close enough to the DMZ that people realize that even conventional munitions could destroy much of the city in a very short period of time. So that's why the military option is not something that anybody in the right mind would want to pursue. Uh, but as we try to exert pressure, even bringing China to bear, which is the smartest thing I think so far that Trump has done on this issue, China's interests and our interests in North Korea are not exactly aligned. They're well, aligned on, in some ways. If North Korea completely implodes, even from, from the inside, there'll be a massive refugee crisis. China's going to be the one because of a whole bunch of reasons, including the fact that that's where you'd walk if you're trying to get out of there. That would likely deal with much of that crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, also, North Korea, though, wants a buffer state between a pro-Western democratic South Korea and communist China, right? Mm -hmm. or, or sorry, China wants a buffer state between South Korea and China. So they want North Korea to exist in some capacity, just not as bellicose, frightening and nuclear armed as it currently is. So they don't want a complete implosion of the state. In fact, they want some version of North Korea to continue into the future well, because it they, gives them strategic depth against all of our efforts to have allies. Would uh, they consider putting someone China. else in? I mean, but, maybe maybe you have someone that is acceptable to the Chinese, acceptable to us. 
and is not as crazy as the one we get there. If the Chinese had that kind of leverage over North Korea, maybe they would use it. I don't think anybody has that sort of leverage in North Korea. And I think that looking at the way the dynasty is going right now, we probably have our most unstable and difficult leader right now in North Korea that we've had in decades. And that's what's brought us to this point, because he's had relatively free reign to do a lot for years now. Trump is trying to confront him, and the recognition is that this guy is even more difficult in some ways than his father, or perhaps even his father before him. Go ahead, then. I knew you were wanting to jump no, in. No, I mean, not only have we gotten to the point where they're increasing their weapon-grade plutonium, experts are thinking now they've been able to miniaturize a nuclear warhead. The question mark is, are they able to put it on an ICBM? And so that's people are asking, why is Trump pushing right now? Why is this sudden urgency of saying we're going to have a show of force? It's becoming to the point where they keep on expanding their capabilities. The time to have this conversation is now, not in the future when they have those capabilities. So people that are questioning why is this taking place right now, it's because they well, have made you, serious it, advances. It, you know, the market agrees with you. The market is okay having this conversation right now. As we look at a Dow right now that's up 130. So despite all the trepidation going into this weekend, all the concerns, all the international strife going on, Investors are still bidding this market higher. And so this is a vote of confidence, perhaps, if yes. you will, uh, in what Trump has done with China. And I'm going to go back to Leslie because she had some positive things to say, which is <laughs> rare, everyone, for Leslie when it comes to Donald Trump. But this is what you want to see. You want to see that statesmanlike president on the international stage that's forcing this issue by working together with other countries. I agree with that. However, some of the threatening tweets is not presidential and does not help not only the United States, um, but the world and especially the folks in uh, South Korea. Buck, you and I have agreed so much today. I'm, I'm, I'm in shock. <laughs> she, I'm, I'm she's like, got to throw something in there. What do I believe? But, but no, right, because, is right, right is right, what, Leslie. <laughs> that's the good news. You know, correct is correct. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm still on the left. I'm still on the left. The, the people of South, South Korea, I agree with you, Buck. South Korea doesn't want North Korea to go away because they don't want to invade North Korea. And quite frankly, um, I disagree with which one of you guys said that it would be China's mess to pick up. It would be our mess to pick up. We would be responsible. The other thing is the North Korean people are completely isolated, are brainwashed. It would be a very difficult task because this is a dynasty by birth, not election. This is a brainwashing of decades. Remember how so they getting are someone new about in the United there States. Because of that would be, be very, very difficult challenging, very difficult. There's no apparatus in very. place at all. There's, there's, there's no civil society right. in place to support whoever would come in and, and take over. But to the point about us cleaning up the mess, Leslie, uh, just geographically speaking, North Korea imploding is going to affect China a whole lot more than it'll, it'll affect us. It'll affect South Korea, obviously, too. But the Chinese worry about a future in which they have a massive refugee crisis on their hands because exactly. people can cross the border into China. That's why China is willing to be helpful here. It gives China a lot of leverage over us. You've even heard this from Donald Trump himself saying, maybe we'll give you a better trade deal if you help us on North Korea. So China wants to yeah, do things that are helpful, but they don't necessarily want to make this go away. And when you look at our strategy vis-a-vis -vis boxing in China with uh, allied democracies, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, you go down the line, uh, China wants the strategic depth and projection of having a friendly allied state in North Korea that they want to stay. They don't want to see fun, friendly, democratic elections in North Korea anytime soon. So our interests are aligned only up to a certain extent. Preventing nuclear war, though, is certainly an interest that's aligned with theirs. <laughs> Buck, I agree with you. The problem is China is not alluding to any kind of a first strike, which the United States clearly is with don't mess with us. You know, we're G.I. Joe, you know, puffing out our chests. Right. Um